So from today, <coughs> we'll start. We'll start the data structures every day. The class will be every day. It will, the class for data structure will be from 8 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. IST. Oh, sorry, PST. Um, Okay, and uh, after 8.30, we will continue with our React project. So we are doing the React since many days, and from today, we will start the data structures. Though some parts of the data structures we already did long back, but uh, we will start afresh a lot of new things in the data structures. And I will be showing you about 300 to 400 problems, which we will do in related in relation to data structures and algorithm. So the thing is that this will not be the only lecture in data structures. There will be two-way interaction and you need to learn whatever I am showing you and I want I want you to buy hard the things and reply it to me whenever I ask the question about uh, whatever I shown you in the class. So it's not that I just show you the example and that's done. You need to remember each example and you have to give the test every uh, other day. So that is the reason we will be doing drilling the data structure in detail. <coughs> there are a lot of things we have to study in the data structures. Uh, so the first thing which we will start today is about the sorting. <laughs> Okay, so we will start with the sorting, then we will move to recursions, then we will go to linked list, stacks, queues, and many other things which we will go in the data structures. And exactly at 8.30, I'll be closing the data structure, and those who want to go with the React, they can uh, continue the lecture, and those who, are, those who want to only learn data structures, then they can stop the class after 8.30. So this is the, I asked everyone to create the account in the GitLab. And if you add your account in GitLab and give me your username, I will be adding you in the member list and then you can access the files and directories which we will be creating in the class. So right now, these people are there in the directory. But if you give me your name, I will edit your name also in this list. Okay, so that's all for the intro. We will start now our work. That's the first thing in the data structure. Those who are new, this is the list of the lectures which I did since uh, beginning. And the link for this is already in the Telegram chat group. You can go through it. and. If you want to do some revision on the data structure, which we did long back, I will suggest to go through, mm, let me see which one you will go. Okay, I will suggest you to go through a few videos before you come for tomorrow's class. Mm -hmm. One second, let me find. Yeah, so go through the lesson number 33, 34, and 35, where I explain the big O notation uh, in relation to the data structure. There is video recording. It will be same recording. There will be no separate recording. Okay, so okay, let's start with our data structure today. And uh, so the class is every day. You have to log in at 8 p.m. and then you have to sit from 8 p.m. to 8:30 p.m. So first thing which we will start 
in the data structure in this course is the sorting part. So there are various types of sorting which we will be doing and the one the one which I will start now is called the bubble sort. And remember whatever I will I am telling you now I will ask you in some time or tomorrow. So make sure you pay attention to whatever I show you. <coughs> Sorry. So this uh, sorting thing is a lot in JavaScript and we have a default uh, sorting also default function for the sorting also in JavaScript. Whenever we have the array kind of thing we can do the sorting for that array. So we will talk about the default function of the sort of JavaScript in in couple of days and we will also learn that part how to do the sorting in JavaScript. But let's assume that you need to do the sorting yourself and for that there are different mechanisms of sorting which you have to remember. And this course is specifically for the interviews. So in interview they, they can ask how will you do the bubble sort. So you need to do you need to know the uh, pseudo code for it and you need to do the actual code of the bubble sort. So we will see both of the part. We will see the pseudo code also and actual code also. And once I start this bubble sort, I will ask you questions in between. So if you want to answer that question, you can unmute your or you can type in the chat. Some questions are there which cannot be typed then you can unmute it and you can answer it. But some questions you can answer it in the chat so that you can do it in the chat. And every co class will be recorded. You can watch it later. But if you don't come in class, there will be no interaction to interaction and you will not be able to learn it as I wanted you to do. Because only watching that video is not sufficient. I, when I will ask you questions, you need to answer that. That will make you more strong rather than just watching the video. Because there are a lot of videos already available in the YouTube. Okay, so if you want to learn properly, you need to come in the class and do the two-way interaction for whatever topic I show you. So, Tam, you cannot hear. Any any other person who can cannot hear? Okay, so Tam, maybe you can. Okay, Tam can. He cannot hear. Okay, it's okay now. So it will be in the YouTube channel in this YouTube URL, which already I shared in the Telegram group. You can watch all the videos, past videos. And today's video will also be uploaded here. You can watch it here. Okay, so make sure you come in the class and do that interaction. Uh, if you watch only video, there are hundreds of thousands of videos available in YouTube. Okay, so that will not make you good enough if you watch only the video. You need to do two interaction, and when I will ask you questions, you should answer it. It's a programming. It's all this data structure is complete programming. So whenever you ask questions, just don't ask to me. Just make it public so that everyone can see what you're asking the question. Hassan, this class is about the programming. So we will be doing programming in JavaScript. What programming we are doing? We are doing the programming about the data structures and algorithms. Okay, let's start with bubble sort. Okay, so I will show you a few examples of the bubble sort and then we will start writing the code of the bubble sort and uh, you have to write the code and I will help you in writing the code. That is how it will work. I will not show you that though, this is how it works, that, that's it noted down. So we will do a two-way interaction and you need to help me how to write the program for the bubble sort. <coughs> so let's see how the bubble sort works. So these are the different types of sorting where algorithm of each sort is different 
and you need to understand how the bubble sort works, how other sort works, which I will show you in few days. So how the bubble sort works. So I will show you example how the bubble sort works and then we will start writing the code. So you have to remember all the programs in your mind. So I will ask you to re revise it multiple times so that it, it becomes in your memory and you should remember it uh, permanently in your brain. Okay, so let's say we take an array. Okay, we will see how the bubble sort works. So for example, array is 29, 10, 14, 30, 37, 14, 18. So this is my array and I want to sort it using the bubble sort. Now we will see how the bubble sort works to make this in sorting uh, sorting of this elements. Yes, J JavaScript is from scratch in the YouTube. Okay, so now what how the bubble sort works? We have to go through each element. 29, 10, 14, 30, 37, 14, 18. So let's say I go with 29 and I already explained, Hassan, I already told it is a programming. SKR 8 to 8.30 p.m. is the data structure class. After 8.30, I will continue with my React project, which I already started a few days back. Okay, so now we have this data set. We have to sort this data set using the, the bubble sort. So you need to understand how the bubble sort works and how you have to change these parameters so that it becomes sorting, it, it it becomes in the sorted list after our whole code. Okay, that is the task. So what, what it will do, it will check each element, it will go through each element, it will check the nearby elements. So 29 and 10, we will see the 29 and 10. Now, which one is the bigger? Out of this, which one is the bigger? 29 is the bigger. 29 is bigger. So, we swap. What we swap? We swap this position. 29 will come to 10th position and 10 will go to 29th position. So, the new array which will uh, be visible, it will be like 10, 29, 14, 30, 37, 14 and 18. So this will be the result after we swap 29 with the 10. Now we have to check 29 with the next element. Which one is bigger? Okay. So, so uh, between 29 and 14, 29 is bigger. So if 29 is bigger, we will swap. So we check 29 and 14 and 29 is bigger. So we swap the numbers. Swap the numbers means 29 will be swapped with the 14 number. Okay, so the new array which will become is like this. 10, 14, 29, 30, 37, 14, 18. Okay, what will happen in the next pass? Next pass will be 29 will be compared with the 30. 29 will be compared with. Is 29 bigger than 30? No. So we will not swap. So we'll check 29 and 30. Is 29 bigger? Answer is no. So if the element is bigger, next element, then we have to swap the elements. But here, 29 is not bigger than the 30, so no swap. Okay, then we'll continue with 30 number. 30 is and 37, because now we got 30 number as a bigger number. So we will compare 30 with 37. Is 30 bigger? No, so no swap. 
So here also we will not swap. Then we will continue with 37 number. 37 and 14. Is 37 bigger? Yes. So we will swap it. So 37 is bigger. So 37 will stop with the 14. So 14 will come in 37 position and 37 will come in 14 position. So the new array will be here it will come 14 and here it will come 37. <coughs> now we'll check is 37 sorry 37 and 18 is 37 bigger answer is yes so we swap so once we swap the new array will become here 18 will come and here 37 so this will be the first pass so we have completed the first pass so you will see the elements are in sorting ascending order but still not all elements are in ascending order because 14 is here also, here also, and there are 29 and 30. So we will start with the second pass. This one was the first pass. So we will uh, repeat the procedure again. Whatever we did here, we will repeat it again. Is 10 greater than 14? So you have to tell me whether the swap will happen or not. Is 10 greater than 14? Yes or no? So you have to put in the chat, yes or no. <laughs> No. Okay, this this is simple. You don't need to unmute yourself. Just put it. Some questions are there which you cannot type it, then you have to unmute it. So answer is 10 is not bigger than 14. So there will be there will be no swap. So first time we will compare with 10 and 14. So no swap. <coughs> then 14 and 29 whether we have to swap or no swap no swap next will be 29 and 30 swap or no swap no swap then will be 30 and 14 swap or no swap yes swap so it will become new array will become 14 will come here and 30 will come here. Okay, now 30 and 18. Swap or no swap? 30 and 18. Swap. So the new array will become 18 will come here and 30 will come here. So now next element is 30 and 30 cent. Swap or no swap? no swap right so the final answer is this one after the second pass this is after the second pass next so what is happening the top number is bubbled up to the top top means in the end so that's why it is called the bubble sort so the top number is bubbled up bubbled up means it goes to the end and that is the name is bubble sort okay now we'll go with the third pass 10, 14, swap, no, no swap. No swap, because 10 is smaller than 14. 14, 29, swap or no swap? No swap, because 14 is smaller than 29. Okay, then 29, 14. Swap or no swap? Yes, swap because 29 is bigger than 14 so the new array which will have become is 14 will come here and 29 will come here next 29 18 swap or no swap yes swap so the new array will become like 18 will come here and 29 will go here next 29 30 Swap or no swap? No swap. 30, 30, 30. Swap or no swap? 
no swap. Okay, so we have to go through all the passes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are there. So we have to go to actually six passes if all numbers are very complicated uh, or not sorted. But here we got this uh, sorting already. Uh, so it is already sorted. But you, if you complete all six pass also, that is also fine. And in the next pass, there will be there will be no swap any time. But it will be doing the process again because we have to. We, we don't know whether it is sorted or not sorted. So actually, we have to complete through all the pass. Right now, since it is visible, it is you can see that it is sorted. But uh, but when you write the code, you have to complete it, assuming that you have to finish all the levels. All the levels means you have to go to fourth pass, fifth pass, sixth pass. You have to go to six times because we have the seven elements. So you have to go to six times and you have to complete the process completely. So that is how the bubble pass, uh, bubble sort will work. Now we will start writing the code <coughs> for the bubble sort. Uh, bubble sort. Remember, we may not complete it today because I have only 30 minutes to do the data structure. But at least we will start now and we'll complete tomorrow. Okay, so don't think that we will be completing this today only. But now you got the idea how the bubble sort works. So we have to go through each, we have to compare each element with another element. And if it is greater, we have to swap the element. And like this, we have to go till end. So that is how the bubble sort works. So you have to remember this, how the bubble sort works. I will ask this question tomorrow and you have to answer this, how the bubble sort works. So bubble sort works like, like we have to compare the two elements and if it is greater, we will swap. And like this, we have to complete the first pass, that is all the elements. Then second pass, again all the elements. Third pass, again all elements. Like this, we have to complete all the passes before we say that the array is sorted. Okay, so right now you have to put in the telegram chat your email in the group. Don't send me privately, put it in the uh, our telegram group and I will add it. Okay, so right now I'm doing this one. After this, I will add your name. Okay, let's write the code now. Okay, we'll start writing the code. So whatever I will write today, that is not the final code. Remember, we will do optimization of that code. I'm not showing you the final version of the code now because we have to go through a lot of small, small versions to make the final version. So whenever I will write the code now, it is not the final. It is the beginning. It is the start. Okay, and then I will tell you to optimize the things uh, in that code. Okay, so don't think that this is the final version. I'm writing it here now. So let's create a function called as bubble sort and we will pass the array inside it. Okay, and this will also ultimately it will return the array. So whatever array is coming here, we will modify it and final sorted array, we will send it back through this function. That is how it will work. For the sample, we will call this function. Everything will be in the JavaScript, no, no Java. Right, I will be doing all the data structure in the JavaScript. Don't send me email here in the tel in this query conference chat. Send me in the Telegram group, uh, which I shared with you. If you don't know uh, that, I will share that group again. Okay. Okay. So let's start with this bubble sort function, and we will start how this th function will work. Right. That is the purpose. So in the last, I will say console.log of bubble sort. And for the sample, I will pass the same array which I created here. Okay, this, this is the array, I will pass it. Yeah. So what we are doing, we created a function, pass the array, and we return the array in the sorting, for, uh, in the sorting with the sorted results in the end. And this is the sample array I created in the JavaScript, and I am passing in this function. And I'm doing the console.log so that I can see what is the final output it is. Now, if I do, right now, if I enter it, it will give me same array without any sorting. See, I'm getting the same array without sorting. But the purpose of this exercise is we need to create a function so that we can sort in the bubble sort way, the bubble sort method, okay? 
So now you have to help me. I will ask you the question and you have to help me. So first, what you saw when I was writing example, that I went through each element, okay? I went through each element. Okay, so if you want to go through each element, what code you will write it here so that I can go through each element of this array. So if you know, just put it in the chat. Yeah, loop, loop. So you have to write the loop. Just give me sample loop here. So what should I write here? I don't want what you write inside the loop. Just give me the loop. What loop I should write it here? Write down, write down. For, for, whatever it is. For what? I want to write down the syntax. There is nothing array dot len, Rakesh. You have to specify. You cannot say len, there is no len. Array dot len. Equal to equal to, i equal to equal to, there is nothing like i equal to equal to. Yes, Nazir has written it correctly. So for let i equal to 0, i less than array dot length, i plus plus. So we, we are running the for loop because as I showed you in the example, we have to go through each each uh, number from start to end, right? That is what I have to do it. So next one, okay? The next one is I have to go to first pass. That is I have to complete whole. Then I have to go to second pass. I have to complete whole, then I have to go to third pass, I have to complete it whole. So to go this passes and then go through each element, what should I write inside it so that let's consider this as one pass. One pass, two pass, so we are writing this for loop for each pass. But when I start the pass, I want to go through each element again. So inside it, what should I write so that I can go through each element again? Because we have the first pass. Let's say I take 29, we go through one pass. Then I take 10, I go through another pass. Okay, so we have to go two times. One is through each one, and we have to go again as a second pass, as a third pass. So what should I write again here inside it so that I can go second pass? One more loop. Right, Shota is right. We have to write one more for loop inside it. Let's name it as J. Okay, remember this is not the final one. Okay, so I'm just putting little little bit, uh, I, I'm just putting something which is not very optimized version, but I'm putting some code in it, okay? So we will start with, both will start zero, but in reality we have to subtract little bit because when I start with the all elements, uh, you know, 29 and 10, I should, you know, take care of this also, that 29 should not be compared with 29, something like that. Okay, so we will go with the second version of the loop, j equal to 0, j equal to array dot 8, and j plus plus. Okay, one will be the four passes, and one for each element we have to loop through. That is what we will be doing it. Okay, now tell me, I have not written the code, more code for it. I'm just here in this point. Now tell me, what will be the complexity of this function? What will be the big O notation of this function? Raghav, you are right. It is n square. Okay, Divya, I will I will tell you. I, I already told everyone to go through this lesson number 33 to uh, 33, 34, 35 to understand the big O notation. And this is the complexity, uh, to understand the complexity of any function. But, but I will tell you in short. So there are n number of elements. If we are going through if we are going through n number of elements with only one for loop, then the complexity of that 
algorithm is O n because we are going one time through each element. But if we are going through two for loop, it's a two for loop. Here I'm going two for loop. That means the complexity becomes O n square. That is the complexity is doubled. Kind of uh, not not double. It is kind of squared. Okay, this is called the squared. So we're going to through two two times the same number of uh, elements. Okay, so that means the complexity is increased to square amount of the initial number of elements which we are passing. Okay, so that is what we need to tell you. So when you go for interview, they will ask uh, write down the bubble sort function. So you will write down this, 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 blah, 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 blah. And then they will ask, what is the complexity of it? So you have to see how many loops you have went through. There are two loops, so you have to make it O n square as the complexity of that function. Okay, more is written in, more is uh, explained in these three lessons, 33, 34, 35, you can go through it. And when we will be doing each function, I will be explaining little bit about each complexity, whatever each function is. Okay. So we will write down the function again tomorrow inside it. I don't want to take more than half an hour for data structure. So just I will let you know that we will continue with this one based on our discussion, what we did here. Okay, whatever I explained you this one, we will go through it and see how this has to be converted into the practical function or the write a code for it. But remember, this code is not optimized. After I complete one example of the bubble sort, I will work more on optimizing it and making it a little better. So there will be two, three times I will go through this function and try to make it better and better. So that's all for today about the data structures. So if you have any question about this, you can ask. Otherwise, we will move to our React topic, which we already started since long. OK. So remember, whatever I showed you today, I will ask you tomorrow. So make sure you go through this and understand it thoroughly before you come for tomorrow's class. I will also save this information in the notes so that you can refer it after the class. Okay, so those who want to continue with the React, they can stay. It will be 8 p.m. to 8.30 meetup. I created only the one meetup, but those who wait, they can come tomorrow day after two, they continue it. I will not create another separate meetup for tomorrow, but it will be every day 8 p.m. PST. 8 to 8.30. So I will write down in one notes and I will share you the URL so that you can refer the notes, today's notes. So I will just mark it as lesson one so that data structure lesson one and I will paste all whatever I showed you. Go through it. I will share this URL also here. So every day, same time, there is no holiday unless I tell you in Telegram group that today there will be no class. Otherwise, the class is uh, every day, even Saturday, Sunday, there is no holiday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every day. And sometimes I'm busy in meeting or I'm not available. I will tell you in the Telegram group. So make sure you also join my Telegram group. The link to Telegram group is also here in this chat. Okay, so we'll continue this bubble start tomorrow. Let's go. Let's go and start working on our React project. Okay. So those who want to continue with the React, they can stay. And those who only want to learn data structure, they can leave the meeting. It's up to you.
Okay, let's go and do the React project. <coughs> Let me add the people who have given me their email in the Telegram group so they can access access the repository. So how to use the repository is already there in this past video. If you start with the uh, with the lesson December first, you can see what you have to do with the GitLab. Go through the GitLab lesson December first, or if you stay here for a few days, I will I will repeat that also. Okay, let me write put the notes in the. So let me also put this bubble shot in the notes. So in the data structure folder. I will create a new file 0001 bubble sort dot txt and I will put all the information which I did it. Or I create a new folder 0001 bubble sort and I will move it inside it and then I will rename it to day. 001 or 01 okay so I am keeping it history here also you can take it from here also okay let me add other other people who have given me the email address okay Samir's email is not working let me add So everyone has developed a role. So what you have to do, I will tell you uh, with this. Okay, maybe stick for a couple of days. You will know. Otherwise, go through the past video and understand what you have to do. Okay, because I will not repeat everything what I have shown previously. Okay, Barga. Barga is not working. Tam, let me see Tam. Not working. Submit it, see submit. Yeah, this one is working. Next is Ronald. So once you get this GitLab access, you can see all my all my files and folders which I have created, and you can copy paste whenever you want. Sir, could you check my email? Yeah, what is your name? Nazir. You can you speak loudly? I am not able to hear. Uh, Nazir, Nazir Ahmad. Nazir Ahmad uh, is there. Okay, this one you gave already, yeah. right? Thanks. Okay, next is uh, I will answer that question. Uh, J, okay. So J, the thing is that it all depends on the students which I get. Okay. So depends on the students how they understand the things the time may change. It may take three months, it may take six months, I don't know because I will go through each topic and I want the proper response and if everyone will respond properly it will be done quickly but exact date I don't know. I have to do 300 to 500 problems. Whenever I will be done with those it will be done. Okay so time frame I don't know. Just come here till I'm alive. <laughs> till I'm alive in this in this class, it may take three months, six months, I don't know. Okay, David, let me add David. David, it's not working. So, Jay, 
web development is already started. You can go through this whole video section. It's a lot more than 100 videos are there. We already started React since many days and we'll be continuing it now after I add all the names. Okay, let me add this one. Okay, last, last one for today. Yes, React.js, Node.js, then CSS, then we'll go to React Native. Okay, anyone with your guest role? Okay, so. Okay, uh, one person is not able to see. Let me show him. Okay. Okay, so I'm done with adding this. Let's continue our class. Okay, so Sonu Singh was getting some error. Sonu Singh, are you there still? Let me see. Sonu Singh is here. Are you getting the error now also? Okay, let me run the Sonu Singh's branch. He was getting issue solved okay it's solved so i will not run it i will go to my folder everyone has to create his folder and work in his own folder only so everyone who is here they have created his folder in this and then committed it in the git uh, git repo and in each of your folder name this is each one's name and each one's name <coughs> we have to we have to create different folder so for React, I created React. For Node.js, I created another folder. For data structure, I created another folder. So you have to create different folders for which we are working on. So right now, we are working on the React. So I will go into the React folder, and I created another folder inside React that is the master. And once I am in the master folder, I will run npm run dev. So those who are new, they will understand if they walk, go through all my past videos and uh, they can see what we are doing now. So maybe two, three days you will need to un uh, see to understand what uh, we are trying to do. Okay, one second. Okay, so I started npm run dev and we will see what is our website now. So we are trying to build, we are trying to build this campaign, uh, new campaign. It's a campaign management website. And we are doing this one uh, just, so this is the listing of all the campaign. So I asked everyone to do the search part, who has done it? Anyone completed this search part? I gave the assignment that you complete the complete the this search part and uh, no one is replying. That means no one has done it. 
okay so no worry i will do it today and you can you can see how to do that i told you to put the uh, put the redux part inside the search page so let's go with it since no one is replying so i assume that no one has completed that part so we have to go to website 3 campaign home and in the search.dsx so first thing i told you to make the it redux available so how to make redux available i have given the sample also in the redux that is a test.dsx so first line which we have to add is this one okay next is we have to add these two parts right now i don't have any function i will make it empty for the state part since we don't want to retrieve we just need to update the information we don't need the map state anything we'll just write on the empty object okay then we'll go to the last line and put this one here so this is the first step in in making it redux available so i'll just copy this part okay so this is the first part so just let me call the function also which i will be calling in this page so i already told you on that day what function i will be calling i will be calling this update object one so let me call this function here so i'll say import from i'll go one level up then i'll go one level up then i'll go to the redux then i'll go to the actions and then i'll go to campaign action and which one shall i want to call i want to call the update campaign object and here i have to name update campaign object is equal to update campaign object but since i created call this function so here i will change the name of the function handle update campaign object so you can name anything here because i don't want to keep this name and this name same if i keep same there will be no problem the site will work fine but if you have sonar lint install it will give some warnings i don't want that warning so i will create a new name though it is same both are same and i will call this here in this search part so now in the search i can access this function and whenever i call this function it will dispatch this object whatever i am passing it okay so before i go further just add just add these two lines and add this function and then in the last line i will scroll once you're done add this one so i'll give you one minute to add this here and the last line so so those who are old they can start working on this let me tell dev what he has to do so dev we started the react few days back and then you can watch the old video and try to come up with the current one but at least if you are not because there are a lot of videos it may take uh, 15 to 20 days for you to go through all the past videos so what you have to do once you have the access of this repository i will tell you how to create a folder then you can at least copy all the files from my folder my my name is manish you can copy from my folder everything which is here in your folder and then you can at least from tomorrow you can at least start working from where we are currently here and later when you get time you can go through old videos and try to learn what we did in the past so from today you after the class you can copy the code from my folder to your folder and start working from tomorrow ram ran uh, can you change 8 pm pst to 8 am pst uh, right now it will not be easy for me to change from 8 pm pst to 8 am pst
okay because i have lot of things to do in the morning i i live in phd time zone so in the morning i have lot of things to do okay so when you are done let me know so those are new they can uh, create the repo copy everything which is in my folder and then they can start working from tomorrow and those who are old they know what to do So in the react to those who are new I'm just telling them so right now what we are doing we are building this website called as campaign management this is the campaign management we are building this website campaign management campaign is something a drive or campaign which you want to create for example you want to make trump in 2024 so you will create a campaign and many people will come on your website and they will support your campaign and they will see that your campaign goes through that is what how it will work Okay. Let me give you this one. Okay, okay, Kate, is it done? Okay. So if you have added this one, just add the last line also. okay so done okay so now what we have to do whenever user will search i showed you whatever user is doing search or changing the parameter on the search side we are updating this state variable which is this one but as soon as the user will click submit we need to call the back end server to get the details based on the user's preference so what we have to do in the handle submit we need to change all the three details like keyword sort by and sort order okay so let's recap this again i will change this keyword okay once i change this keyword you will see my state variable is keyword sort by and sort order i can change the sort by to title then again my sort by will become to title i can change the sort order to ascending so you will see the sort order is 1 if it is ascending it is 1 if it is descending it is minus 1 that is how it is working in the search parameter but this is updating the local search state variable as soon as i click this search button as soon as i click the search button i will update the redux and once the redux is updated this whole thing will get changed right now it is not tied so it will not change but after i complete the search part i will take care of this part also to Uh, link both the things together so and as soon as you click search right now it will it will do nothing but after my current code it will only update the redux part but it will not change this part because we have not linked that to this one so let's do that now so what i will do whenever i click the handle submit i have to call this handle cam update campaign object this handle campaign object expects there should be the object so let's create the object and pass it there so i will call this function and i will pass the object what object i have to pass i have to pass this three things so directly i can pass the state so instead of putting this object i will pass the state so what i am doing as soon as someone is clicking the submit button i am updating the updating this uh, action by calling this action and passing the state variable that is these three 
key value pairs to this action. And once this action is called, we dispatch the campaign object, which will go into the reducer. And in the reducer, it will update my state. So we will be able to see the updated thing here. So let's check this one now. I will put, for example, Trump. Let's put Trump. And let's change it to title here. Let's change it to ascending. Now, watch what uh, what will happen when I click the search button. When I click the search button, you will see the campaign object is called and it has the payload of keyword sort by sort order, which will go and and it has, you know, uh, this state creates something which is also positive. So no worry. Let's see what will happen here. What's happening in the here? So in the here we are passing the title, this one and keyword. So everything is updated. We got this keyword as a Trump. Sort by is coming title, which is changed here, and order sort order is one, which is ascending. So at least my campaign reducer is updated it. But I will do one change. Rather than passing the state as a whole, I will just create my object and pass it specifically because this my, my state may have few more things which I don't need to pass. So I will just pass. Right now it is not there, but in practical world. Tomorrow, maybe we do change. We may have more key value pairs. So I don't want to pass everything. So I'll specifically say which things we need to pass. OK. So in this handle submit, just call this function with the key value pair. I'll give you one minute to finish this part. Scroll up, scroll up with this, we already did. This is what we have to do now. What do you want, Ashok Kumar? This one? Okay. Okay, so once you are done with this part, so we are at least getting the updated things in the Redux, in the Redux store or Redux state. Now we will tie, now we will tie this home part, the search results based on whatever user is doing it here. Okay, so let's tie both the things together. Right now, whatever I do change here, 
If I click that button, nothing is happening on the left hand side. So we need to fix this part. Okay, let's fix this part. So I'll go to the listing page. So we have we have uh, taken the results, keyword, sort by sort order, but we are not using it. We are not using it here properly. Okay, so we are passing sort by sort order, though it is not also handled in the action. I'll show you. So sort by sort order. Okay, sort by sort order is working because we already tied it up, but keyword is not working. So let's try to put the keyword. So I'll go to the listing page. I will also pass keyword in this function. And I will make the dependency also. I will pass the keyword. Now I will go to this function in the campaign action. I will add the keyword here. OK, so I added the keyword here also in this function. Now if keyword is present, I need to do change in the query. So let's do that change in the query. So here I will say, if keyword is there, that means someone has put the keyword, then we have to call one more parameter for the query. So I'll say query dot. If you remember, I showed you how to do the query. It is the matches because keyword can be anything, right? Keyword can be Trump or anything inside it. Right now, I will search only in the title field, so I will put title, but later on, I will show you how to do in the description also. But right now, let's do it only, first version we'll do only in the title, later on, we will do how to do in the description also. And this is the syntax to search in the, okay, this is not the search, this is the keyword, sorry. What I'm doing, I'm doing the query dot matches, I'm taking the title field in this table, and I'm passing the value keyword. So with this keyword, it will match the title. And if, if it is there, it will give me the results based on that. OK, let me refresh it now. OK, let's first uh, see if this sort by and this is working. So if you see, this is created nine days ago. And this is creating nine days, three days, because it is descending created date. Let's make it ascending. So now see, three days ago, nine days ago, nine days ago. Let's create a title ascending. So G S T. If I say title descending, it's saying T S G. So we are able to do this. Now if here, here I will type Trump, so it should show me only one result. That is the first one. So now it's only showing the one result. Let's put the pandemic. And you can put anything, capital, small, because we already mentioned here in this that it should be case insensitive. So let's search pandemic. So only pandemic part is displayed here. So we already now tied this keyword with the function. So just add, open the listing page, add the keyword here, here. Then I will open the action page to give you time to write this part. Let me know once you're done with this, I will open this campaign action. OK. 
Okay. So just add keyword here. And if keyword is there, change add the query. So here we are using the parse server as our backend database and the React as the front end. And parse server gives us capability to do anything as a backend server. So we are actually doing full stack front end or using the parse and front end using React and backend as the parse server. Okay, so this page is done. The list, the home page is done. So we are done with everything which we want on this page. Now, what we have to do? We have to, yeah, one more thing which we have to do in this page. Okay, because you know I will be on this page. Okay, I will be on this page and I will not refresh this page so we need to do live query also for this campaign so anything new is there I, I want to add it here so that is part remaining let's see what things are remaining and we will do tomorrow not today that thing so one thing is we need to add the live query okay, for the home page so whenever some new campaign is there without refreshing I want to show that a box here for the new campaign that is one thing we have to do add campaign is working fine okay so when I create a new campaign right now I am sending the user to edit page okay but I want him to send it to send it to the home page so we will do that thing now let's see what things we have to do so I'll go to the create page whenever someone is done I will just send him back to the home page. Okay, let's see if this is working. So though he will not be able to see, okay, I, I have to show the message also to the user that the new campaign is created. That I will do tomorrow. We have to show the message. Not tomorrow because that message showing is little bit big enough. It may take time. Message to the user. Okay, now the time to give you the task. Let me give you the task. Since we are doing data structure also, so we will give a little less time on the React part. Okay. So you have to create a new, uh, like we have created this in the utilities, we have created this site folder. You need to create a new folder here. I will create a folder and you have to try working on that part. So what we have to do? 
show you. This is called a snack bar. Whenever I click something, see message is coming here like this. So we need to integrate this one, this part, something showing the message like, like this snack bar. So we need to create uh, two folders. I will create the folder here. You have to work on this one. One is called the my snack bar. Okay, so this is the one folder. Like I have created site action, site reducer. You have to create my snack bar action, my snack bar reducer. Okay, and try to. I know it's difficult for you at age, but try to integrate this snack bar in this action and reducer. Okay, and you need to create one more, what you call as. one component which you can use to test it. My snack bar dot JSX. So this this will be the sample component like we have test dot JSX where I was able to I was I was testing this increment and decrement. Similarly you have to test this snack bar by updating. See we have the open, we have the duration. So all these things to be handled by the Redux. And same thing you have to implement it here. And you need to create new in the root reducer you need to add one more my snack bar reducer dot js. Okay, that part you have to do. You have to create two files. I will create it, just you have to fill it my snack bar action dot js new file my snack bar reducer dot js okay so let me explain again this my snack bar will be component similar to test dot jsx my snack bar dot jsx should have should have the code which we which we see here this code this snack bar code so that whenever I call this my snack bar, it should it should call this one. Okay. So when I open this, when I click this open, you need to change the variable in the reducer open to true. And when I close it, this this should become false. So you have to take care of this open and close in the reducer and action. We can make more changes like if you pass this variant success and also you need to change your snack bar like this. So you should be able to handle this part also. You should be able to pass the vertical and horizontal position so that it can come on the center top, top right, bottom right, bottom center, bottom left and top left, whatever I want it. Length is automatic, you don't need to add anything. So make sure you take this snack bar and try to integrate that thing. And if it is difficult, I will do it tomorrow for you. Now what will happen when someone will create the campaign, for example, test one. When someone will click the save button, I will show this snack bar that your campaign is created successfully. It is waiting for admin approval. After approval, it will be visible to the users. So that message which user will see is through the snack bar. That is the purpose of this snack bar. So we, we can use this snack bar in this create page or we can use anywhere. So that is the reason we are putting in the Redux. So we can customize the message, we can customize the position, we can customize it in many ways. That is what we want to try it. So you have to try it, how to do it. I know it's a little difficult for you, but at least you try it if you can do it. If you cannot do it, I will do it tomorrow with in front of you. Another thing which you have to do, if you can do, that will take uh, some for new time, more time, which I will also do in next week, is the drawer. So you need to put similar thing in the Redux also for drawer. Uh, where is drawer? Drawer. Yeah, this one. 
so this drawer can be like left right top bottom if i click left left side will open if i say right, right side will open top will open and bottom will open so after you are done with snack bar try to make another redux action reducer for this drawer also so that i can use it anywhere i want and i am putting this in the utilities so that i can use it in other sites also right now we are working on the website 3 but we will be working on website 4 5 6 we should be able to use it there also that's the reason i am not putting in the redux part of website 3 i am putting it inside the utility so i can use it anywhere in other websites also okay so try it any questions on this you can ask me now or if you want to try you can try and if you cannot try we will see tomorrow I'm getting error in the page. What error you're getting? Sir, I'm getting some kind of count. Uh, uh, kind oh, of map state. Okay, let me see. Uh, I'm done with this today's class. Let me close the recording.